Which is one of the reasons I think that we actually stand a good chance of standardization at TC39. They are very conservative as an organization, as they should be, right? They don't want to change JavaScript um, speculatively. And so what one of the things they look for is are you, you know, you shouldn't be trying to standardize something because you want people to use your new thing. You should be standardizing it because everyone's kind of already agreed that this is the right way to do things. And having, you know, all of the frameworks with the exception of React saying like, hey, we want this to be a standard because we're all doing this independently and we see value in sharing is a powerful statement. Um, so if you remember like Tracy's graph and what Ben was saying, signals kind of look very simple, but they have kind of more complex behavior under the hood. They're building this dependency graph between values. And one of the challenges you see with like having multiple frameworks on a page and micro front end with Svelte and Angular and Solid, for example, they all have their own idea of what this dependency graph is because they all have their own implementation of signals. And so a signal in Solid means nothing in an Angular application. It doesn't participate in our dependency graph or vice versa. So the real value of sharing um, this concept, sharing the actual signal implementation, is sharing this dependency graph, participating in the same graph. So state maintained in one framework can be read in another. Or even more generally, someone can write like TanStack query um, using standard signals, and it just works across all the frameworks because they all know how to understand its dependency graph. Yeah, it it also opens up an opportunity for browsers and others because one thing that you need to understand is like the DOM is really like a framework for rendering stuff in the browser, right? Like, so you've you've got Angular and these other things that are a framework on top of a framework that happens to use JavaScript. If it's it's if we have signals in JavaScript as a standard standardized thing, then you could very or the the W3C or the what wig or whatever has the opportunity to say, oh, we can use these types and you could set an attribute to this signal. And then the browser itself can be like, oh, I've been notified this changed. I'm going to schedule a render. And all of a sudden you have the ability, their frameworks have the ability to take out a huge amount of the boilerplate that they might have and just be like, oh, well, I just wanted to update this DOM element and it, it would just work. Now, whether or not that's actually gonna happen, I don't know. Like that, that they're another conservative, less conservative, but slow moving entity that tries to build off of incremental changes over time. Uh, but it's it's certainly something I've I've heard discussed since this has come up, and it's certainly something I think would be very interesting to to investigate. Absolutely. What was your question for Alex? Oh, my question. So my question for Alex, because he knows that I spent time in the Angular compiler, um, a tour of duty, if you will. <laughs> the, uh, uh, I still remember I'm the frog eyes. If, if, uh, <laughs> You know, as you're compiling and you see, oh, they've bound out a signal to this element. Are you doing anything with your like frog eyes, whatever, like to be like, oh, this element here, we're just going to subscribe to, you know, notifications here and then schedule an update to that one element. Is it that targeted or is it not that targeted yet? Is it just like try to render the whole component? And as you answer um, this question, can you please let us in on the frog eyes? <laughs> yeah, the, I don't the frog know eyes. this. I don't understand the frog eyes. Uh, if that. you've ever looked at the Angular source code, you see our instructions have this like funny um, double Latin bar O prefix, um, <laughs> which is a character that Mishko picked back in the day to like sort to the end of the auto completion list to like mark our APIs as private and get them out of your face. Uh, and at one point in time, Ben was trying to switch that symbol to another one we called Frog Eyes. Um, <laughs> it didn't go so well. We, that's a funny story we can get into later. <laughs> um, but to answer the question, so today we, we talk about this as like, what is the granularity of updates? When something changes inside of a template, how, like which part of the, which expressions do you run? And then run change detection against to see like, what DOM updates do I need to do? 
Um, and today, the granularity of update for signals in Angular is a component. Um, we run the component and all of the embedded views within it. And the reason is because signals are mixed in with non-signals, with other zone.js, you know, just or async pipe for RxJS even. Um, and so we're kind of trying to find the thing that balances being able to start using signals, but not having to migrate your entire component to use signals, uh, which would allow for more granular updates. So at some point, we will have um, a flavor of component that the RFC called signal components, um, which has that guarantee. Angular knows now that everything in that template must be changing through a signal.